wolves by name, but dogs by nature. These wild creatures are in fact close cousins of the world's favorite family pet. The feared wolf has become the animal we think of as our best friend. What do these two still have in common? Are there any savage instincts left in this tamed and pampered playmate? If we could see the world through a dog's eyes, perhaps some of these questions would be answered. Wild or tame, all dogs retain the instinct for the hunt and the muscle power to pursue. Whatever the quarry, all dogs thrill at the sport of the chase. For their cousins in the wild, this is no playful game. Hunting dogs need stamina and speed, good sight, smell and hearing, and effective teamwork. They're among the most successful predators in the natural world. Dogs were first trained for their hunting skills, but they've strayed into human culture in many ways. As gods guiding ancient Egyptian souls to the afterlife and guarding Chinese temples, even as loyal listeners advertising music, but we're wary of wild dogs, the sly fox, the trickster coyote, and the sinister pack of wolves. Whether friend or foe, predator or pet, all dogs are from the same animal family, the canids. With long, powerful jaws and sharp teeth, the weapons needed to catch large prey and chew through bones and carcasses. They're also used to keep rivals in their place, to stop uninvited guests from stealing a meal. or to keep lesser members of the pack in line. Within the hunting pack, coloring is critical. Lone hunters like foxes can be plain, but in this pack, teamwork requires that each dog has a uniquely recognizable pattern. Coats that distinguish them in the wild also distinguish them as pets. Whatever shape, size, or color, from wild hunter to gentle pet, all dogs have clawed toes for digging, and their digging instincts can be put to good use. Terriers were once trained to unearth rabbits, but today, as pets, they are more likely to dig up mischief. The fennec fox doesn't dig for fun. For this dog, it's an important way of finding food. Some dogs dig to bury food, but this dog's just digging itself into trouble. Dingoes are more tolerant than people. What's a little sand up the snout if you're eager to share a meal? When a dog follows its nose, it's actually being led by three key senses. Sight, a glimpse of the enemy saves them barking up the wrong tree. Sound. A bark can be a fierce threat, but it's also how canids make their long-distance calls. The howls and yelps of wild dogs can be heard for several miles. Smell. This tells a dog more than all the other senses put together. It marks territory, warns off rivals, tells dogs who's who, where they are, and why they're there. Smells can fully occupy a dog until sound intervenes. It's a human whistle, but the dogs get the message. What's the origin of this unique man-animal communication? It stems from the evolution of our present-day pet. From this modern-day skeleton, go back 30 million years to its fossil ancestor. A dog-like creature that appeared as the last dinosaurs died out. 
Gradually, it evolved growing longer legs, a shorter tail, and losing a fifth toe, but keeping the same powerful skull and teeth. This new creature was huge and menacing. It had become a dog we'd recognize. The wolf. Wolves had winning ways. They worked together, stalking and hunting as a pack. For two million years, they were the world's top dogs. But 18,000 years ago, at the time of the last ice age, wolves met their match in another hunter, also in a pack and chasing the same prey. Although arch enemies, man and wolf, ended up joining forces, some wolves changed sides and wild dogs became human pets. The man-animal bond was so close that legend tells of children being reared by wolves. Perhaps the most famous were Romulus and Remus, the mythical founders of Rome. Human babies may never have lived with wolf packs, but human adults certainly reared wolf pups. They tamed them, trained them, and bred them to hunt in a new pack. 4,000 years ago in ancient Greece, hounds ran at the hunter's heels. And in medieval Europe, huntsmen took a dozen dogs or more out on the chase. While in Asia, special hounds were bred to hunt gazelles and wild boar. In this new pack, all worked together instinctively, creating a winning team. In the wild, each dog has a role in the group, and they all follow one leader. That way, a pack of hunting dogs can bring down prey much more powerful than themselves. Their large eyes spot the quarry. Their ears are alert to the yelp of command, to the clamor of messages from the rest of the pack. Carefully, they isolate their victim, leaving it no chance of escape. Dogs always hunt this way, even in a human pack. Instructions may come from a different leader, but the instincts are the same. Man and dog share the struggles of the chase and the spoils of the hunt. Such teamwork leads to fierce loyalty. Many dogs will perform amazing feats on behalf of their owners, and tales of their heroic deeds make good movies, too. The renowned Rin Tin Tin's exploits may seem melodramatic, but they are matched by the actions of hero dogs in real life. In the First World War trenches, Airedale Terriers carried messages back from the front line under heavy fire. They work 12 hours a day on strict rations of three quarters of a pound of biscuits and a half pound of horse meat. And no eating on duty. And when faced by riots in the streets, dogs help keep the peace. As a pack animal, the dog is loyal to its leader, the handler helping to protect property and people from invasion or attack. That aggression is real, but it can be controlled by the handler's command. A sniffer dog helps fight crime by being trained to play a particular game of hide and seek. Sniffing out drugs isn't easy. These dogs have to take a course, and four out of six fail. It's worth the effort. A dog's nose is far more sensitive than any man-made machine. A dog's senses and instincts are invaluable to us in many ways, as blind people would confirm.
Dogs know instinctively how to stalk their prey. We've channeled this instinct into a more useful skill, herding instead of hunting. No movement in the flock escapes the dog's quick eyes, while its ears are sensitive to the slightest change in the shepherd's command. A sheepdog can detect the tone of a shepherd's whistle or voice up to a mile away. And the most difficult lesson the dog learns? To drive the flock away from the pack leader, the shepherd, which goes against all instinct. It's possible only because of the dog's total obedience. What teamwork the wisdom of one allied to the obedience and supreme senses of the other. Eyesight, hearing, and the dog's most sophisticated sense, smell. Inside its nose are around 200 million smell-sensitive cells, 40 times more than in humans. Through them, the dog's brain can pick up signals from one molecule of scent in a million. It gives a dog a completely different picture of the world based on what it smells rather than what it sees. This kitchen looks empty to us, but for a dog, the view is different. It knows that a boy has walked through. We can make out the footprints, but already the sniffing detective knows much more. It can tell that the boy walked through the farmyard, past the pigsty, and across the neighbor's yard, all in the last half hour. Flowers are irrelevant to a dog, so their scent is meaningless. But food is a serious matter. What to us is an empty plate is covered with the smell of chicken to a hungry dog. And a trash can? This was emptied some hours before, but the dog can detect the subtle whiff of bacon rind, orange peel, and baby's diaper, which were all recently crammed inside. In the wild, this sense of smell is invaluable, the key to survival. The coyote can smell a lemming through a thick sheet of snow and ice. It knows exactly where to jump to find its prey. We've made use of dog survival instincts when hunting for sport. We've bred foxhounds with a heightened sense of smell. Their drooping ears channel scent to the nose, and they're trained to listen, too. Dogs quickly learn to interpret sound. An instruction to the hound signals danger to this dog nearby. The fox is a hunter too, but knows when to turn tail and run for its life. Spurning the way of the pack, the fox roams alone, listening for the murmurs of harvest mice and other creatures. The fox can detect high frequency sounds. The tiniest squeak is all the fox needs. It doesn't have to see the baby mice. It already knows they're there. After dark, the bat-eared fox also hunts by sound, listening for the scuffles of tiny insects. In Czech legend, such movement in the corn is not the wind, but a wild dog spirit to be chased and trapped in the last patch of corn, then banished forever. In the desert, all is quiet during the heat of the day. The fennec fox is listening, but also trying to stay cool inside of its fur coat. Huge ears act like car radiators, allowing heat to escape. 
but it's best to stay still to keep the body temperature down. In the Arctic, foxes have the opposite problem. In sub-zero temperatures, they need to keep the heat in. That's why they have small ears and very thick fur. We've bred dogs to work in the same conditions. The Husky's special skills are strength and stamina. They'll pull this sled all day, panting not from exhaustion, but as a way of losing heat. And when it comes to skating on thin ice, dogs win paws down. It is said that Huskies find the safest route across the snow and ice by sensing hidden danger, such as snow drifts and deep cracks. These are the finest athletes of the dog world, greyhounds. With eyes like hawks, they were bred as lean, lightning-fast hunting dogs. Now they chase a mechanical rabbit instead of real prey. Their speed comes from solid muscle on a lightweight frame. In most animals, muscle is less than half the body weight. In greyhounds, it's nearly two-thirds. That explains why they can run at over 40 miles an hour. And so the winner gets a prize just for following its instincts. Dogs even receive awards for bravery. They have been hailed as heroes for showing loyalty to their human companions. Taffy saved his young master from drowning in a frozen lake by racing off and bringing people to the rescue. An early canine celebrity over a century ago was Greyfriars Bobby. This devoted terrier sat by his master's grave every day for 15 years. After their courage in the trenches, the Second World War saw parachuting dogs drop behind enemy lines to accompany raiding parties and join spy missions. Leka from Russia was the most famous canine traveler of all. In 1957, this dog was the first living creature to go up into space. And which is the brightest star in the sky? Sirius, the dog star. In ancient Egypt, it rose over the horizon during the annual flood of the River Nile. This made the land fertile again, so the Egyptians worshiped this star for its life-giving properties. Another of their gods, Anubis, had the body of a man and the head of a jackal. His role was to prepare the dead for their entry into the underworld. Guide and guardian, recurring roles for the dogs of myth and legend. In ancient Greece, the three-headed hound Cerberus guarded the gates of hell, keeping the living out, and more importantly, the dead in. The dog's superior instincts and senses have always been respected, but sometimes they're viewed with suspicion and even fear. This has led in more recent mythology to the dark and terrifying fusion of man and dog, the werewolf. fiction, but perhaps with a thread of truth. Born of a time when wolves did run through our forest, such fantastic stories alerted us to real dangers. But wolves were only threatening as our enemies. Once they had been trained to work with us rather than against us, their aggression could be harnessed and put to use. The Romans trained dogs as living burglar alarms and intruders were warned off by entrance mosaics, the earliest known sign saying, beware of the dog. Since then, all sorts of dogs have been bred with an aggressive streak. In Italy's Abruzzi Mountains, sheep are protected by a very special dog. It's bred to protect the flock, but also to look like a sheep, the Marama Sheepdog.
Instinct tells any dog to defend its pack, and in this case, the pack is the flock itself. Because this dog was raised as a lamb. A wolf in sheep's clothing? Just like those wolves of thousands of years ago, which learned to live with humans, these pups turned to sheep as a surrogate pack. And as with all creatures, the key lessons of life begin in infancy. Puppies learn through play how to interact with their siblings, and a jackal pup finds out that attention has to be fought for, and it learns to keep its place. A wild street pup in Bali has to struggle to eat and live, scavenging scraps, and it quickly learns to fight for its food. Though not to the point of risking the very survival it's fighting for, In a dog-eat-dog -dog world, survival is everything, and that means learning lessons like submission, acceptance, and going hungry. A dog eats as fast and as much as it can. It instinctively knows to wolf its food. These feeding habits derive from wild dogs, which must eat fast should a bigger rival appear, like a hyena. <laughs> Eating food is also the best way to store it and then transport it back to the den. where hungry puppies are waiting. They beg for food by licking the adult's mouth to trigger a regurgitated meal. So next time a dog licks your face, you'll know it's looking for more than a kiss. In the Arctic, storing food is no problem. It's an open air deep freeze, but the Arctic fox must eat as much as it can to stay alive in these harsh conditions. Under their fur, all dogs' bodies are warm and dry, since they have sweat glands only in their feet. In Mexico, hairless dogs were bred and used as hot water bottles. People may find strange uses for them, but many pet dogs are chosen for one reason, style. And today's pet dogs are designed to look very different from those of yesteryear. A champion poodle must be immaculate with a flamboyantly cropped coat. But poodles were originally bred to hunt ducks and geese in muddy swamps. Maybe not so prim and proper, but more than able to do a job that this poodle couldn't cope with. Much easier to live in the lap of luxury as a coddled companion and make people happy, too. Perhaps that's why there are at least six million pet dogs in Britain and over 50 million in the United States. They're popular, useful, but not always welcome. Dogs are creatures bred in woods and on wild plains, so it's natural for them to mark their territory. It's no surprise they don't always stick to the local hygiene regulations. Laws demand the leash, but once fully trained, most pet dogs would naturally choose to walk beside us. They're part of our team. They could survive without us, however, even in the city, 
and many do. Just as the wolf was drawn to human settlements in the Ice Age, so is one of today's wild dogs, the coyote. There's one dog that's made the opposite move. 4,000 years ago, the Australian Aborigines pet dog returned to the wild. The dingo, which some native Australians identify as their ancestor, recalling a time when man, like the dingo, lived wild and free. Does today's pet dog feel wild and free? How strong are those wolfish instincts still running in its veins? Most dogs keep their wild side well hidden, appearing docile and domesticated to our eyes. They know their place. They've given up their freedom to join the human pack. Who's gained most from this partnership? We have a loyal, affectionate, and obedient companion. The dog has someone to play with, a comfortable home, and a regular supply of food. Our four-legged friend has all its needs met. We may think we're the masters, but which one of us is really top dog? The Eyewitness Museum, created by combining traditional filmmaking techniques with state-of-the-art graphics, stripping away the mysteries of nature and science to reveal the essence of each subject. Bringing the world into sharp focus. The making of Eyewitness. The distinct style of the eyewitness books is the basis for each of the programs. Each half-hour episode is based on a book title. The eyewitness book's visual style gives the program makers a starting point and a challenge. The challenge of transferring the clarity and super-realism into moving images and sound. Now let's take a look behind the scenes at the making of Dog. To the untrained eye, the dog shoot in the eyewitness studio looked like complete chaos. The trained eye knew it was complete chaos. However, Connell, our hero dog, was a true professional. All of the dogs filmed, except Connell and Whisper the Poodle, were pets, and although keen to please, had no special training. Emma, the director, knew exactly what she wanted. After much perseverance, the shots began to take shape. Each dog in turn gave a perfect performance. With a little help from their owners.
When it came to the last group shot, we were all confident of a grand finale. A well-ordered line presented itself for the stills photographer, and on the cue of action, chaos resumed. But in the video editing suite, the director had everything she needed to create the perfectly choreographed dog dance. We set the scene for our werewolf transition by filming in a graveyard, coincidentally at full moon. The initial shots of our actor in various stages of makeup were combined using filmmaking techniques and electronic manipulation. To change our actor from the traditional film werewolf into the real thing needed a morph. The actor was filmed against a neutral screen, matching exactly the actions of a real wolf that had been filmed in the eyewitness studio. On a 3D computer, the best takes of both animal and man were combined. The resulting transition was then superimposed against our graveyard backgrounds.